Hello, and welcome to another episode of Painting in Your PJs with Manette. This is not a live episode, but I had an activity I really wanted to share with those of you that are subscribers to my channel and to members of my community and people especially that have, that have purchased our end of year creative self-reflection bundle. And if you haven't purchased that, you can find the link to that in the description of this video right below. And this is a really juicy mind mapping exercise that I love to do every single year. And it's called your heart's desire or living your heart's desires mind map. And if you're not familiar by mind mapping, mind mapping is simply a creative way to think about your ideas and to help you see interconnectedness of ideas and stories and beliefs in an all new way. And if you've been watching my channel all month long in December, I've been doing a lot of self-reflection, especially thinking about the year that has just passed, thinking about what do I want next year to look like. And I haven't done this mind map yet myself, and it's on my list for sometime between the Christmas holiday and New Year's to sit down and do some work. But I've been teaching this mind map for many, many years now. And so I wanted to be able to share it with you. So bear with me here a second. I'm going to change my camera so that you can see this map. Oh, and I'm going to switch my video is off a little bit here. So turn that off so that I can see. And you can see my nice cup of coffee and my very messy table here. So I'm going to talk you through this mind map, and I will also put a link to download a, a copy of it in the comments below the video so you can print out a copy for yourself. This is a plain black and white copy, but if I were doing this personally, I would want a much larger sheet of paper. This is just the template, and I would also want... Um, to be doing it with lots of colorful markers because I find that whenever we add color to some of our deep self-reflection, it adds an element of play and joyfulness. I'm more likely to do it and I'm more, more likely to have fun along the process. So as we start to think about what our vision is for the coming year, there are five arms that I want you to contemplate that we don't normally think about when we're doing traditional mind maps um, excuse me, traditional vision boards is what I meant to say when we're doing traditional vision boards. And they're very goal oriented. They're very externally focused. And what I wanted the focus of this one to be is how, what do you want to be as opposed to what do you want to have? A vision board is always like, what do you want to have? This is more like, how do you want to live your life? How do you want to live from the inside out instead of being so focused on, I just got to get more done and push and be productive. This is about how do I want to enjoy my life? And I always start over here with the branch of curiosity. I believe that curiosity is our absolute best friend and that the more that we can stay in curiosity, we stay in openness and possibility. And it relieves us from the limits of the stories that we tell ourselves. So curiosity is all about expansion as opposed to contraction or doubt or I can't do that. Curiosity is what if I could. And so what I want you to think about here is you're dreaming into the new year and again, if you haven't done my end of year self-reflection quest questions, I think it really helps prepare us for this exercise. And those self-reflection questions are available in our creative self-reflection kit. So curiosity, start with what are your core values? So if I had to off the top of my head, put five core values, they would be connection, curiosity, creativity, love, and peace were the ones that popped into my head today. Um, and I think there are some values that we hold that never change across our lives. And there's other times when I think values rise to the surface to support us in living into our vision and our purpose. 
And then for each of these, you're going to draw another arm. Remember, we're looking at things that are we want to be curious about. And when you think about 2024, you're just going to fill in the blanks. And these blanks say, what am I seeing? So I'm starting to see what's possible with my business. I'm seeing what's possible with my health. I'm feeling optimistic. Uh, I'm feeling ready. What am I dreaming? So, and that might even should say, what am I dreaming of? Be a better way to say that. I'm dreaming of writing my next book. I'm believing that my vision for a vibrant, radiant life is possible and is getting closer. And what am I planning? I'm planning for time off. I'm planning for relaxation. So again, this is first answer, best answer. Don't overthink this. This is a very intuitive process. And then at the level of compassion, there are three areas of compassion that I think it's important to contemplate when we're looking at our own vision, mission, and purpose for the year. The first one is at the level of the self. And the prompt here is, if I really believed in myself, I would. If I really believed in myself, I would. At the level of the world, think about your contribution. What will your contribution be? What are the changes that you want to see? And at the level of compassion for others and as well as for yourself, who do you ask support from and who do you offer support to? So compassion for me is the energy of how we want to show up in the world. And then at the level of congruence, so for me, congruence is alignment, right? Congruence means that my whole self is on board. And when I am acting from all aspects of myself, especially my head, my heart, and my gut, then I move with strength, conviction, and with courage. So first of all, considering what does alignment mean to you? What does alignment mean to you? And this is a photocopy and some of those words got caught up there. So what does alignment mean to you? What does wholeness mean to you? So another way to talk about congruence is wholeness. So for me, I might write here, wholeness means I am in, I am in integrity with myself. And when I think about alignment and wholeness, and when I think about my vision for 2024, I want to check in with my whole body, what in a lot of circles are called our three brains. We actually have three brains in our body that each have something to say and communicate and that support our support us in moving forward. But so many of us spend all of our time living in our head that we never check in and we wonder why our heart hurts or why we have digestive issues. It's because we're not giving these aspects of self a voice. So checking in, what does your head say about your vision? What does your heart say? And what does your gut say? And I often like to put my hand over my heart or over my gut, get quiet for a moment, take a deep breath and really connect with the energy of my heart and my gut. Really listen and being mindful that my head isn't getting in the way. At the level of courage, at the level of courage, courage can be defined as feeling the fear and doing it anyway. But to me, courage is having something that's so important to me, I'm willing to do it even though it might scare the heck out of me, right? So courage is about conviction. It's about clarity of purpose and moving forward in the right direction. So at the level of courage, our three prompts are, I am willing to, I feel courageous when, and if I was not afraid at all, I would. If I was not afraid at all, I would. Taking a quick sip of my coffee there. And then at the level of commitment, I think it's so important when we're talking about vision and goals and alignment, when we're talking about how do we want to live and how do we want to feel, we have to be 100% committed right? So 100% committed. And I love Gay Hendricks, the author of The Big Leap. 
talks about how in relationships you can't have uh, even a 99% level of commitment because it means that you still have an open window that you've left in your head that is an escape route. So to me, when you find the courage and 100% commitment, anything is possible to support you in moving towards your vision. And so at the place you're in right now, ask, what do I know now about how committed am I? What's missing at the level of commitment? And then simply asking, what is my first step? So often we wanna be able to see the whole picture and we wanna just get from A to Z as if we could time shift, right? And we could skip all the hard parts and the journey and the travel and we can't, we literally have to walk every single step of the path. And when you take your first step, then the second step becomes clear and then the third and the fourth and so on and so on. So when it comes to creating your 2024 vision, just knowing your first step is all you need to know right now. So that is a fun glimpse into a mind mapping exercise I call living your heart's desires. It's a different way of connecting to the imaginal and unconscious realm of your vision rather than connecting to the external goals. It's about leading from within rather than responding to what's outside of us. And I hope you have a lot of fun creating this. You make some time to do this. Definitely give yourself some time to think about it. If anything I said doesn't make sense, then feel free to uh, post a question in the comments. It is the holidays, but I will get back to you with some answers to those questions. And I want you to just lean in to what's possible for 2024 and get some clarity around what's your heart's desire for next year. So lean from within instead of responding to shoulds or being pulled by those external goals of what you think you ought to be doing and instead focus on how do you want to live next year. So enjoy. Uh, let me know if you like this. I love hearing from you in the comments. Let me know if you did it and uh, have fun. I'll see you guys all soon.